<laughs> is this Hello. good? Can you see me clearly? Okay, yes, good. Great. 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 Uh, thank you that you take time for this interview today. I'm uh, very honored. Oh, uh, we're um, wonderful. I follow you, and you're doing such incredible work. You know, it's incredible. Thank you. Oh, I have, oh, I have tears in my eyes. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Uh, um, I'm a little bit excited, and I'm writing down uh, what I want to ask you. I hope it's okay for you when I read from this paper. Yeah. And um, I admire and appreciate your work. And what you have created with One Be and Rising gives so much power and self-confidence to women worldwide to rise and to fight for an end to violence against, against girls and women for a self-determinated life and freedom and security. And I'm proud to be a part of this uh, women uh, movement, and it's an honor for me to talk with you. And at first, I want to say um, thank you for your great book, Apologize. And it is for this torch of hope, power, and humanity. I myself am involved, you read it, in domestic violence, and because I experienced it by myself, and it helps me to understand and to change my view. Out of my history, it means to me an apology does not change the past, but it does enlarge the future. Mm. It is the way to say I have go the way of freedom, love and forgiveness out of the pain that happens to me into understanding, releasing in peace and forgiving myself and forgiving the teachers of my life. To begin uh, your memories with a simple dedication for every woman who is still waiting for an apology. How present is your past today and how was your way to let go of the past in peace? And is it important for you that people know your story? Well, first of all, let me say how thrilled I am to be talking to you. I'm so thrilled with everything you've done for One Billion Rising in Germany and for the amazing movement of One Billion Rising in Germany. It's extraordinary, just extraordinary. And, um, you know, it's a really good question. Am I free? I think that writing the apology was for me the kind of end of a particular story with my father that has really kind of occupied me for over 60 years. And it, since I finished the book, it feels done. It feels gone. And it took a long, long time to get here. A long, long time, you know, over 60 years. But I think there's been many pathways to it. And this book is not a prescription. It's an offering. There'll be some people who want to think about receiving an apology from their perpetrators or writing an apology to themselves from their perpetrators. And if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. There's no pressure. There's no have to. This is just something that I experimented with and it worked for me. And I would say that I think the whole journey has been um, an incredible journey to get free. You know, beginning with um, being really crazy when I was young and being alcoholic and drug addict and wild and promiscuous yeah, yeah. And, and out of control to moving to becoming an activist and a writer where I began to write my way out of it and I began to do work, um, hopefully that was in service of women and, and, and ending violence against women. And the more I worked on ending violence against women, the more I freed myself from my own pain. Um, you know, we, 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 it's, it's so true, I think, that we give them what we want the most. And when we do that, we get free. Um, and I think there's been all kinds of therapies. There's been all kinds of dance, obviously, has been a huge, huge part of getting free. It's why I believe so much in One Billion Rising as a dance movement, because I think when we free the body, when we liberate the body from our own poisons, from our own past, from our own rapes, from our own abuse, we begin to get free in our brains and our spirits in every way. And then I think actually writing this apology to myself from my father and going inside him to both get him to really make a detailed accounting of what he had done, um, to look back at his own history and understand why he had done it. That was profoundly helpful to me because I think for a lot of survivors, we are just kind of left with and obsessed with the why. Why did our perpetrator hurt us? Why did our predator, type, predator invade us? So for me, the book was incredible uh, freedom on that level to feel compassion for my father, to feel understanding of my father, 
And then I think when my father really takes responsibility in the book and owns what he's done, indicating that he couldn't possibly do this again in this lifetime or any lifetime, when he says to me at the end of the book, um, you know, oh man, be gone, he, he's gone, he's gone. And I feel really, I feel this new power of energy and surge of possibility. I just feel like I'm in a whole new paradigm. Oh, wow. 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 Thank you for your trust uh, that you tell me that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's different from women to women to feel free with this, uh, what, um, what happens in the, in the past. And I, by myself, find a way in, um, yeah, to love myself when I look in the mirror um, yeah, that I see I'm, um, yeah, a woman that stand and go her way and uh, nothing uh, can touch me what's happened in the past. And uh, your book is uh, really, really, um, yes, it's my, my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we really, I think it's kind of counterintuitive, but when we really go through the pain, yeah. we go through it. When we go into it, we go through it. When we sit outside, It actually showers its darkness down on us. And I think this book was literally like walking through the fire. Do you know what I mean? But outside, there was just this wondrous world. Okay. Um, One Billion Rising is a movement um, which creates a worldwide community united in the wish to end violence against women. It is the global impact, uh, which is so beautiful and inspiring all the women worldwide. We all share this beautiful song, dance and spirit of empowerment. How did you manage? How was it possible to spread the message all over the world to all continents and to create this strong movement? Well, you know, part of it's just... (laughs) <laughs> part of it's just in the hands of the of the mother spirit who takes it and 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 sends it where it goes but i think there were a few things i think v-day had been a very long movement for for a very long time and so the vagina monologues had been performed all over the world and we had a huge network um i think everybody understood when we started this nine years ago that we were at a potential tipping point and i think Everybody loves to dance. I think there is something about whether it's in Germany or Africa or Manila or San Francisco, there is something about the call to dance that really spoke to women because dancing is the most, it's just one of the most powerful things on the planet, right? It's collective, it's ecstatic, it's rageful, it's fierce, it's, it's, you can do it on your own, but you're doing it together. It's free. Capitalists can't own it. It, it raises the vibration. And I think right now, more than anything on this planet, women need to raise the vibration because it is the vibration that and the new energy that is going to begin to turn us in a new direction. And right now we're kind of enclosed in this dark, um, you know, this pressing in world of strong men and fascism and destruction of the earth and migrant... Um, diabolical migrant policies and racism and xenophobia and incredible misogyny. And I think when we raise our vibration into our fierce, loving, um, indomitable selves, and that's what dance does, um, suddenly we begin to see our power individually and our power collectively to turn the whole um, story around. Yeah, I'm with you with every word. <laughs> and uh, what uh, what what I and what uh, many women um, like so very much is the way you inspire us, loving our body, feeling our strength, and uh, regaining our body as belonging to us, not belonging to anybody else. How did you come to this deep understanding? What we women need to get in love with ourselves and get self-respect, and that is what we need so badly. Well, I think one of the things that patriarchy did right from the very beginning, right from the Garden of Eden, right, is it separated us from our bodies, from Earth. It it, it basically said that somehow the Earth was not of was not us, right? That it we had to have dominion over it, and we had to tame it, and we had to, to manipulate her, and we had to 
she was bad and she 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 was out to harm us and 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 it taught us the same thing about our bodies right and it taught us that through a lot of disciplines <laughs> rape um abuse domination and i think when your body is invaded just like the earth's been invaded by frackers and oil companies and people burning down forests um when you when your body is occupied when your body is harmed you leave your body you actually leave it so you leave the center of your energy the center of your power the center of your intu intuition the center of your imagination and i think i know for for me that when i have over these years begun this journey back into my body and each time i get deeper into my body i come into more of my fierce muscular um kind loving energy that isn't light energy it's very fierce it's warrior like but it isn't violent mm -hmm. and i think that's what we need to come into now and i think if we're outside our bodies we can't come into that energy so i think all the things that we do whether it's loving our vaginas whether it's doing the vagina monologues whether it's dancing whether it's like it, just doing exercise where we feel our bodies you know or just where we touch our bodies and have our bodies be lovingly touched these are ways we come back into ourselves okay i have a personal question uh, i i'm uh, i'm working with women that um experience um, um violence um by her husband or her um, partner and it's when I talk about in our society about the things, uh, there is a lot of shame and um, looking not in this way. How uh, can we change this in our society? You mean shame on the women? Yes. Yeah. Well, I think I think one of the things we're so generous women that mm -hmm. even when we get abused, we believe it's our fault. <laughs> You know, we have a certain kind of generosity, <laughs> like it must be our fault as opposed to the perpetrator's fault, right? And I think part of what we need to do is put the shame where it belongs on the predator, on the perpetrator, on the person who's committing the violence. There is there is nothing any woman who can do um, to give any man the right to harm her physically, sexually, in any way. So the shame is always on the perpetrator. And part of it is just reversing that dynamic i think when somebody enters you when someone violates you when someone overtakes you you feel so much shame because you have found yourself powerless or helpless and they have been able to do what they want with you and that is not our that is not our shame that is the shame of the person who is 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 perpetrating and i think it's so important you do exercises around anger and around the expression of anger because that's how you release shame you know letting giving that that shame giving that um anger back to the person who's harmed you and um you have um uh, or what is your experience with women um in your um area they uh, overcome abuse and how do they typically find it strange to move on what well i think mean? one of the things we all have to remember is that we all need a posse we all need a group of women who has our back, right? You need six women who you know have your back and who you can go to and who you can cry to and who you can always speak to and you know you're supported. It's like, it's like your soil, it's your foundation, it's it's where you're gonna grow your roots. Um, and I think, I think part of it is just the ongoing practice of loving your body, coming into your body, um, speaking your truth, not bearing what you feel, not denying what you feel in given situations as you know speaking truth to power and not believing you're unworthy or don't have the right but but stepping into that voice because that voice is what will eradicate the shame okay yeah for me um yeah it sounds i think it's 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 uh, it's um it's different when i'm going to to women in um i was in bali this year and um i was um in italy and um here in germany when you talk about this um it's different i think um how how the society goes with that um and um what for me is uh, is urgent in my work um is to find um the uh, i hope i find the right word that we can um, transparent, if you know this word, give to the women uh, what they can do. And um, what, what do I you mean? What? Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Go no, ahead. No, it's okay. 
No. no. no I it's fine. <laughs> okay. And um, the question that I have next is: um, What are the most important resources young girls and women need to succeed? In a society dominated by men, I think that uh, it, it's a problem that is in the head from uh, many women. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. we we going uh, I think um, many steps back in our uh, how we, we 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 live our life and how we make it. And uh, yes, what do you mean about this? Well, I think I think first of all, um, how how do, how does one find one's voice, right? It begins very early on in the classroom, right? Be believing that you have a right to share your opinion, believing you have a right to speak out, believing you have a right to share your ideas. It begins right there at a very young age. And I think, I think part of it is like building communities of women who nurture you, who support you, who believe in you. So you always have, you always have someone to turn to in the face of patriarchy, right? And then it's knowing your rights. So what are your rights? When you go in for a job, you are, you are entitled to equal pay. So you have to ask for equal pay and you have to be willing to believe that you're worthy of equal pay. Even if you don't like fake it till you make it, like do it until you believe you're worthy of it. Right. I think it's also like finding what it is. What's your bliss? What's the thing you really want to do in this world that you're being called to do that you can't stop yourself from doing? I think once you find that thing, you you become unstoppable in a certain way. You become I irresistible, you know, because you're. You, yeah, you I know what you mean. Uh, yes, I know it. When when you do it, when you say I, I do it now, you have yeah. to do it. Often women get on tracks where they're doing work or they're doing things that they don't believe in or they don't feel, and so they don't fight for it. But when you find your bliss, when you find the thing that you you Romy, me Eve individual people need to do you can't be stopped it, it it just becomes it's like a river and i think that's really critical right and i think then they also the other part of it is not agreeing to the patriarchal rules not agreeing to only one person gets to win and competition is the way and domination and hierarchy rules but like we're all included and I'm going to bring everybody in and I'm going to use my privilege to serve other people who don't have privilege. And I'm going to use my platform to bring marginalized people forward and to always use whatever gifts you have or whatever privilege or entitlement you have to bring other people forward actually makes you stronger and gives you more confidence. Okay. And what do you mean is, um, um, I, I must, um, a moment. Um, the, the, um, the, the thinking from women about men and the, the, the thinking from men about women, uh, what's going wrong today between men and women generally and how do we fix it? Well, I think I really talk about that a lot in the apology. I think my father, like most men, are brought up within this toxic masculine patriarchy where they're taught not to have their feelings, where they're often adored but not loved. And being adored doesn't mean that you are seen. Being adored doesn't mean that you are cared for. It means that you, somebody projects this idealized image onto you, which you have to live up to so you can't really be yourself. You're not allowed to cry or show weakness or express vulnerability. And I think until we start bringing up our boys, where they can be human, where they can be open, where they can be soft, where they can be vulnerable, where they can wear wings if they want to wear wings or skirts if they want to wear skirts, um, mm -hmm. to be their whole, full, imaginative, you know, um, non-binary selves, we are going to have problems with men and women because men are taught to kill the feminine, to destroy the land, to dominate the land, to uh, assert their power, to show their strength, to show they're on top. And as long as that impulse is alive in the world, there has to be violence because that is how patriarchy sustains itself. Okay. And um, what I often, um, what often happens when uh, when when women work together, I am, I am, yeah, is that uh, they fight against, yeah, that, that they think they, they is beautiful and it, 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 this woman is better than me. And then um, the power from women that they have when they work together goes losing. And um, what can we, what, how can we bring 
this um, this um, thinking of togetherness to women? What do you mean? It's such an important question. It is such an important question because I think, sadly, we have um, the introject of patriarchy inside us, right? We, we've been taught that if one woman moves forward, that's the only woman who can move forward. If one woman succeeds, no other woman succeeds. If one gets money for her project, nobody will get, else will get money. And all this is a total distortion, which patriarchy has absolutely kind of um, blueprinted into us, right? Our mm -hmm. job is to help our sisters. Our job is to serve our sisters. Our job is to love our sisters and to share with our sisters and believe in our sisters. And even if we're jealous sometimes, because we all get jealous. You know, I always say when you're jealous of a sister, buy her a present. You know what I mean? And work against your desire to tear her down. And believe that there is enough here. You know, I, spend, I live in the woods and I see how generous the mother is. She has given us so much and more and more and more than we need. There is plenty for all of us. We don't have to fight. We don't have to compete. We don't have to, you know, we don't have to, um, you know, keep things to ourselves and not give it away. The more you give away, the more that comes back to you. And I think you have to just work against those impulses in yourself that tell you, I think some of it comes with our mother, where we, all, we sometimes have mothers that don't want us to go beyond them that want, don't want us to have joy if they didn't have joy or they don't want us to have a good man if they didn't have a good man or a good woman if they didn't have a good woman. And I think part of what we have to do now in this time is go beyond ourselves in generosity, be bigger than ourselves, be bolder than ourselves, be more loving than ourselves. If Be, be, be dancers with, our, with each other because when you dance together, you don't feel competitive. You don't feel like, some person gets the light and then the next person gets the light and someone's on stage and then the next person's on stage. And it's always traveling, it's traveling. And, and we understand that we all get to be in the light and we all have our moment in the light and then we share it and we, we, we enjoy the other person's light, you know? Yes, yes you are so, so, so right. And um, I think uh, I want to put one word in this, what you say is um, trust in ourselves, I think. Mm -hmm. That's Definitely. Important. Definitely. And I have one question from a woman in, uh, in uh, um, One Day in Rising Munich uh, that I should ask you. Uh, she is working for indigenous women here in, uh, in Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, her question is at Trump's inauguration, the Women's March attracted international attention. How do you see the influence of the Valentine marches of the indigenous women who have been taking to the streets against violence since 1990 on 14th February? And what has developed since then? Are, you're talking about the marches in Canada, I think she means, yes. yes. I think those marches have been really powerful. And there is indeed beginning to be legislative and legal um, you know, action as a response of those. And I think it's critically important they continue until there is justice. And I think right now around the world, the, the layers of violence that are happening to indigenous women who are protecting the earth, if we look what's happening in Brazil right now, if we look at what's happening in the Philippines right now, if we look what's happening to indigenous people in America and Canada, women are on the front lines protecting the earth and they have always been the women who have been sexually abused, who have been disappeared, who have been most marginalized, most erased, most uncared for. I mean, I think in America, the rate of violence towards Native women is 3.5 times higher any women. So I think we have to keep our focus and allyship with Indigenous women um, in Canada, but everywhere in the world until there is justice. It's, I saw a movie about um, these women, uh, and it's, um, it's horrible what happens to this Horrible. Women. Horrible. Yeah. It's terrible. And it's not like the murders have ended. You know what I mean? Murders are continuing. And, and I, think, I think it's often the women who are most marginalized, whose rights have been, who are the most easily disappeared, easily erased. I'm looking, for example, what's happening now to... Um, um, migrant women who are coming in from, you know, Mexico and who are coming to, through Mexico from Honduras and Guatemala, where they're fleeing wars, where they're being raped, then they cross to get here, they're getting raped. And then when they get to this country, 
they're getting raped. So the, the levels of violence inside the violence are so massive. And that's what I'm saying about if you are a white person in this world, if you are a person who has privilege, if you are, you have to be spending a good part of your time being in solidarity with people who don't have that privilege. It's critical. And where do you see the women's movement heated in five to 10 years? Well, I think right now we are in the center of the storm. I think we are seeing with climate crisis, um, from the burning of the Amazon to the melting of the glaciers to these hurricanes all the time, you know, we have 10 years left. We have 10 years left. And I think our movement, our women's movement has to now become integrated with the fight for the Mother Earth. I don't think it can be separate anymore. I think we have to understand that how we treat the earth, we treat women. It is one and the same. And we can't separate our struggles. And I think all the struggles right now, the struggles of people wanting to be able to have freedom to cross borders, to find residencies, the struggles to end hate and, and to stop othering people and to stop making some people more important to others, and the fight for, for workers' rights. All these struggles are totally integrated, but for me, I think our fight for our body and the body of the earth has to become one and the same. And we have to fight for new green deals, green new deals in every country. We have to insist that the entire capitalist structure is uprooted and redirected towards renewable, towards um, a non-extractive economy, towards really building a world that is, is local, And where we 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 use what we 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 don't use and more than we need, and that we understand that our relationship with the earth is, it's it's we are one with her. We are not separate from her, and as we harm her, we harm ourselves. You are so right, and um, yeah, I hope it will happen, and uh, that the people wake up and see this in this way. Me too. And. Um, Shortly, can you talk, uh, talk about uh, this uh, wonderful project, City of Joy? What City is of, behind this? City of Joy is just, uh, it's just a diamond. It, it's just the mm -hmm. most glittering, radiant project. And it's, it's one of the most sacred places I've ever been. Um, we're now in, I think, our ninth year. Um, we've graduated, I think, 1,600 women who are thriving, who are leaders in their community, who have started collectives and leadership um, movements in their community. We have a beautiful, beautiful farm, V-World Farm, where many graduates go to learn permaculture and farming after they graduate. Um, we have 350 hectares. We have pigs and rice and avocados. And it's just the most beautiful place. And it's really a project which is about turning pain to power where women who have suffered the worst atrocities of sexual violence on the planet become the brightest lights, you know, well, through a gorgeous process of love and healing and dance and theater and community-based love and learning their rights and, and rising um, because they have time and attention and care over six months. And I think it's a real model for building City of Joys everywhere, um, really um, small, local, um, central, revolutionary sanctuaries where women heal and simultaneously come into their power to change and transform the world. And how can we help from Germany to... Well, if you want to support financially, you can go online and you yeah. can get to City of Joy. You can show the film mm -hmm. and let mm -hmm. people know about it. Um, you can begin in your community to find the women who are unseen, who are disappeared, who don't matter, and reach out to those women and ask them what they need, like we did in the Congo. And they told us they needed a place, so we built them a place. Ask them what they need, and then figure out how to serve their needs. Who are the women in Germany who are suffering? Who are the women in Germany who are marginalized and, and don't get included? Reach out to those women. See what can be done, see what they need. Be their friends, be their sisters. And at final, I can talk 
hours and hours with you. <laughs> and uh, can you give us a powerful message for the women in Germany? Well, first of all, I have so much honor and respect for the women in Germany. I have watched from the very first year of One Billion Rising, the brilliant organization, the incredible solidarity. There may be arguments there, but let me tell you, Every, I think last year, 130 cities rose in Germany. And it's so well organized. It's so well, it's so local. It's so, everybody knows what they need to do in their communities, but it's also so in deepest solidarity across the country. So what I want to say this year is we really need to rise against fascism. Fascism is encroaching on Germany as it as is everywhere in the world. We are seeing the rise of the right wing. The end of Angela Merkel is a very scary thing. And we see the creeping, um, rising back of, of that fascist tendency. And this year, women around the world have to rise against that domination, that um, authoritarianism, that hatred of other, that nationalistic um, superior impulse And we have to make sure that we are including everyone in our story. I, I, I look now, if we look all over Europe now, it's very scary what's happening, right? If we look to Hungary, if we look to Croatia, if we look to Poland, if, if, even in Sweden, I mean, we're seeing the rise of, of this right wing um, pull. So I would say this year, women, we need to be strong women against the strong men. Right. We need to say we do not want a society on which we go back and otherize people and harm people and hate people. We are going to move forward with a fierce love that cannot be stopped. I love you. I cannot say it in other words with you. <laughs> and um, I, you hope, so um, I hope I uh, hope when you go um, on a journey around Europe, um, that we can um, see you in Munich. It would be a really, really great honor for us. Uh, when you're here in this area, please I give us a message. I would love it. I would love it. And I think yes. there's a paper. Is it coming out in Munich? There's a, there's an, um, what's the name of the paper? I, I'm going to, it's the big paper in Germany. What is the name of it? Uh, um, oh, we have many big papers here. Know, Deutsche yeah. and a Bild and um What we have, um, I'll send it to you. But there's a big there's a big piece coming out in the apology in the next two weeks, I think. So um, yeah. I'll I'll send it. We'll send it to you. But you'll probably see it. But but I feel I feel that Germany is a real stronghold, a real center of our movement. And I I feel like as you rise, we see you rising, and it means so much to women all over the world. Germany is such an inspiration for so many people right now. Okay. We have to finish now. Our time is over, my dear. And um, it was, uh, yes, I cannot put it in words. And um, yes, thank I you. Hope you're I can amazing. See you. It's just amazing what you're doing. And I'm sending all my love to the women and to the men in Germany who are rising. Let's make this year the most outrageous year. Yes, we do it. Let's go and, first, you know. And I hope we stay in contact, my dear. I uh, would be a wish for me. And uh, I wish you, yes, healthy and uh, power to move on. And all the best for your book. And I hope it comes out in German. Me too. In German me language. Too. Yes. Yeah. 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 Great. This all is right. Great. Thank and you for me. Thank you so much. Okay. 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 Thanks to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.